Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is your, uh, captain speaking. If your ears just pop, that indicates that we've reached our cruising altitude of roughly 275,000 feet. Today we're going to be taking a look at how well Microsoft Flight Simulator recreates the nighttime sky. Be sure to hit that like button and consider subscribing, but most importantly, let me know your impressions of Flight Simulator in the comment section below. As we start our night out with a beautiful sunset, thank you for choosing to fly with Late Night Astronomy. With so much attention being given to Microsoft Flight Simulator due to its excellent recreation of aviation, I thought today we would take a look at it from a different perspective. How well does it recreate the nighttime sky? Specifically, can it even compete with some popular astronomy apps out there? To test this, let's start off by looking at the moon. We're flying here about 52 miles above Cape Canaveral, Florida. As we pan away from a beautiful sunset, we see the moon rising above the horizon. Let's zoom in and look at the surface detail, and that is, that is beautiful. We've got an accurate surface of the moon. We've got the colors exactly as they would look if it was rising above the horizon. Now, if this were an astronomy app, we would be able to go through and check the moon from night to night to see the phases shifting, and that's exactly what it's doing right here. We're going back in time from a full moon to a half moon to now a crescent moon. This is exactly how something like Sky Safari or really any other popular astronomy app would deal with this target. Let's switch back to the cockpit. We see the moon above the horizon and even the reflection of the moon off of the Atlantic Ocean. This is a good bit more than I actually expected. This is so impressive. We can even zoom in here like we've got a pair of binoculars looking at it. This is, this is wonderful. So let's go from the moon to the background stars in general. For this time of year, we should be able to see the Milky Way being very prominent in the sky. And it looks like that's exactly what we have right there. We've got the dense core of our own galaxy spanning from horizon to horizon. One thing I am noticing, though, is it does not appear to have the planets in it. Um, right now, we should be able to see Jupiter and Saturn, but they are not showing up. So that is one small thing that it does not have. We can shift from night to night, just like an astronomy app, though. We can even go from season to season, going from summer to fall, and now to the winter sky. So for the winter sky, we should see some popular winter constellations, and there it is. We have the constellation Orion exactly where it should be. This is so impressive. We have Orion's belt, we have Betelgeuse, and we have the Orion Nebula exactly where they should be. Now, it wouldn't be complete without checking out the North Star. To do that, we're gonna find Ursa Major, the Big Dipper, which is right there. And we're gonna use that to take us right over to Polaris, the North Star, which is exactly where it should be. Now, if this is accurate, everything should shift around that point in the sky. And that's exactly what it's doing. This is so good. Polaris is a fixed point and everything else is moving around it. If you've had any experience with Microsoft Flight Simulator, let me know what impressed you about the nighttime sky and its use of astronomy in the comments section below. Thank you all so much for your continued support, and as always, clear skies from late night astronomy.